Hello viewers, something new today, koji. So I'll be making kome koji, following a beginner's recipe to make a fermentation starter for Japanese rice wine sake. So this is the small packet of uh, kojikin. I'll use that to make kome koji, which is the fermentation starter. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe and please share this video wherever it is appropriate. And by liking this video, that encourages me to make new videos. And by sharing this video, well, that's really um, the purpose of this channel, to spread the word about rustic Asian rice wine. So uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. So here's what you're going to see in this video. First of all, what is Koji Kin and Kome Koji? You'll watch me make Kome Koji using my temperature control system and you'll, uh, you should watch for at least one serious error that I make. And at the end, I will compare the process of making Kome Koji and Nuru. Okay, so there are instructions um, on this packet. We'll be following them, just the most basic, simple instructions. I'll try to follow them as closely as possible. If this is something new for me. I haven't done this before. So what is Kojikin? Well, this packet contains a specific variety of mold spore. You can use these mold spores to grow mold on something. And uh, I'm going to grow these spores on rice and that'll be called Kome Koji. Growing the mold on rice is called Kome Koji. This is part of the process of brewing sake. That Kome Koji contains enzymes that convert starch to sugar. And usually saying koji by itself, at least in English, it refers to kome koji. So these are the simple instructions. Uh, there's some more details on the website here. I, bu I bought this packet from, uh, from Amazon, but you can also get it directly from the company. And I'm going to try a half recipe uh, the website actually did recommend that for beginners to try a half recipe. So I'm going to make kome koji. I start off with 200 grams of sweet rice. Wash that. Since it's just a small amount of rice, it's pretty easy to wash. And uh, I'll let that soak for one and a half hours and then drain it for 20 minutes. Then I'll steam the rice just in, uh, just in my bamboo steamer because it's such a small amount of rice. I don't need to use the big steamer. So I'll steam that for 40 minutes. And then uh, pick that up and uh, let it cool. Now, according to the instructions, I'm supposed to cool, let this cool to, to uh, 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, I got a, a bit distracted with setting up my temperature control system. So please learn from my mistakes. My mistake here was that I let the rice cool down too much and it became too dry. So I'm setting my temperature control system to 30 degrees. If you want to know more details about my temperature control system, please watch this earlier video. Um, I'm sure you can make an, a, a similar system out of off the shelf components yourself, not, not too difficult. So this is, what I, this is what I'm using. There's a heating pad um, under those tiles and uh, just try to have some thermal mass in there. And I'm using this piece of cardboard to hold the lid open a bit so there's some air circulation. Because what, uh, ideally what we want to control is the temperature at 30 degrees, the humidity around 80 degrees, and we want some air circulation. Um, I don't have a fan, so all I have is propping the lid open. Now uh, I'm going to take my uh, 
overly dry and overly cooled rice, put it in the pan, and I'm going to take a quarter teaspoon of kojikin. It is extremely powdery, so be, be careful handling it. So I'm taking a quarter teaspoon and I'm using, I'm pouring it through this sieve, try to get it as evenly as possible over, over the rice. and then try to mix it by hand. But my rice is too dry and stuck together. So once again, please learn from my mistakes. Um, then cover it with a wet cloth. I used previously boiled water to wet this cloth. It goes in the temperature control system and we measure time from this point. It's, it is supposed to take 30 hours, very specifically. So I peak after two hours, of course, Nothing has happened. Um, 10 hours later, we're supposed to mix it. So I try to separate the grains of rice. It's still too sticky and too dry. So it just smells like cold cooked rice. It doesn't, doesn't seem like anything is happening. So I think that's my fault. After 20 hours, we're supposed to mix it again. Um, so I'm going to carefully try to separate the grains again. Um, it has more of a sweet smell now, so something is happening, but I'm going to try to keep it a little wetter. Now it's 30 hours. It's supposed to be done now. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Um, no, it's not done. But I'm going to mix it again. It is a little easier to separate and there are some small white patches. It has a stronger smell, but it's definitely not done. So I think um, I have to figure out what to do here. My plan A is just to continue until this is finished. Plan B would be to try again with new rice. Just I'll try new batch. And then my plan C is to use this package of prepared Komi Koji that I bought earlier. I know what it's supposed to look like in the end. Uh, each grain of rice should be completely covered with mold. So that's what I want to see in the end. So I, I'm just going to continue with plan A for now. I'm going to try to continue this until this finishes. So 44 hours later, I'm going to mix this again. And there is more mold growing on it, I can tell. So that's, that's good. Um, look at it closely. Can see some fuzziness. So that's um, yeah, that's 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 better. That's more like what we wanted to see. Bad news is that there's some tiny spots of green. That means sporulation. That means the mold has given up and is producing spores. Um, and uh, we don't want that. We want the mold growth. We don't want um, we don't want the spores. But I don't think there's enough white mold yet. So I'm going to let it continue for 52 hours. So the white mold is growing, growing well. Um, but there's also more green mold. So I'm still going to watch to see what happens here. Um, now it has a cheesy smell. I, it's, I think it's supposed to have a cheesy smell. That's, uh, I think I better decide what to do with this now. It's 58 hours, has a strong cheesy smell. Um, I think there's enough white mold covering every grain of rice, but now there's quite a bit of that green mold. So I'm, uh, despite the green sporulation, I'm going to try to brew rice wine with this. I'm going to try to pick out the green bits. So let's learn something despite going off track here. I ended up growing the mold twice as long as I was supposed to. So I'm going to try to brew with this. We'll see what happens. So now let's compare the process of making koji versus the process of making nuruk. So the substrate is different here. Uh, I made this koji on rice and uh, when I made nuruk, I, it was wheat based. But that's not a strict difference because some koji is grown on wheat and some nuruk is grown on rice. Let's talk about the mold species, the koji mold and the nuruk mold. It's both the same species of mold. So that's, that's the same. Now, 
However, the source of mold spores is different. The, the, for Koji, we got the mold spores from cultured spores in that packet. And for Nuruk, uh, we used wild spores from straw. So that, that's, that's a big difference. And the, the growth time uh, was quite different. Koji was supposed to grow mold for just 30 hours. For Naruk, I grew mold on it for two weeks. And then the aging is quite different. The Koji can be used fresh, but the Naruk is dusted off and dried in the sun for a month or more. So that's, that's, another, um, that's another big difference in the process. And then looking at recipes, uh, I know that the strength of Koji and the strength of Naruk is different. Naruk is stronger than Koji. Nuruk has stronger saccharification power. Recipes seem to use twice as much koji as Nuruk for the amount of rice. So although both koji and Nuruk are mold-based fermentation starters for brewing rice wine, um, the process of making them is different and we're gonna have to see if the result of brewing with them is also different. So stay tuned for brewing in the next video. I will point out that the website visionbrewing.com is a real blast from the past. It's uh, this is the oldest operating website that uh, that I know about. You know, although parts of this website have been updated more recently, um, other parts are are really from. Uh, it looks like it was created around 2002 and uh, didn't change very much since that, uh, since that time. So it's a real blast from the past. I'd like to uh, congratulate this, uh, this company on the long lived website and business. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching to the end.